Hi, in this video I'm going to explore the lost pubs of Stone Market. Come with me. If you're new to this channel, please don't forget to click the red subscribe button and click the little bell icon and then you'll get notifications of new videos. Join me on today's walk, a three and a half mile walk around Stone Market, searching for long lost pubs. Sometimes the buildings are there, sometimes they've long gone. Let's travel back in time and find these places. So someone suggested I should do a lost pubs of Stone Market walk. And uh, it seemed a good idea at the time. What I didn't realise was there's over 70 Stone Market pubs, most of which have been lost. So you'd be pleased to know I'm not going to do all 70. Really got to acknowledge all the help I've had with this video, mostly, firstly, uh, the book uh, Pubs of Stone Market by Neil Langridge and Brian Southgate. Fantastic book, details all 70 plus pubs, most of which have gone. It gives you the details of all the landlords, all the owners, all the stories that happened in that pub. And obviously we don't have time to go into all of those in this video, but that book's been a great source of uh, help in this video. Unfortunately the book's out of print, but uh, there is a copy at Stowe Market Library. Uh, so if you want to track that down, get a library ticket and go there. And then there's been the Stowe Market Past and Present Facebook group been really helpful providing stories and some of the pictures uh, couldn't have done it without them so it's definitely a group effort I'm just doing the walk as I said I'm not able to do all 70 pubs that feature in the book but I'm going to attempt I think 28 but let's make a start with the first one as we come into Stone Market from the Berry Street end <laughs> And so number one is the Bell Inn, which stands at 18 Berry Road, on the corner of what was Sick House Lane, now Pound Lane. It was open 1836 and closed in 1919. A newspaper from 1880 stated that a man from London visited the landlord of the Bell Inn and sold him a donkey. The animal is said to be capable of one mile in three and a half minutes and it caused quite a sensation at the railway station when it was elevated into a horse box. OK, so we could walk straight on into town, but what we're going to do is take a right and go up Fairfield Hill. It was back in the day called Violet Hill. And at number 56 once stood the Baker's Arms, which, uh, no surprise, as its name suggested, was also a bakery and later when it lost its license became a lodging house. As we wander down Tavern Street we come to what was once the Red Lion time was finally called in the Red Lion in 1910. The building is now a dentist and is appropriately painted red to remember the Red Lion I guess. Just along Tavern Street on the corner with the marketplace stands a solicitor's office that was once the Greyhound Inn. This building dates back to the 14th century and is probably the oldest building in Stowe Market apart from the parish church. Previously to having the name Greyhound it was formerly known as the Angel Inn. Just across the road from the, where the Greyhound was is the site of the Bull Inn. It was in a previous building but it, on the site of where the pancake shop and car phone warehouse is now. The old building was demolished in 1843 and the current building was erected and a local chemist transferred his business into the current building. 
The current building changed hands many times over the years. At one time it was a gunmaker's and then it belonged to Simpsons and then became a local newspaper office. And for a time it was a flower shop before becoming the pancake shop. We now turn left at Berry Street and before long we come to another lost pub of Stone Market. Just up past Tall Order's Cafe see in the distance the old co-op building which now stands empty it used to be the fox and hounds at one time the landlord was also the person that collected the rents of the market stall holders so he'll be someone who was very well known around the town another thing to note is that the old archway of the pub corresponds approximately to where the new archway is that takes you through to the back of the buildings. A few steps up the road we come to what's now a Pilates studio and it was the Vulcan Arms which has nothing to do with Star Trek but Vulcan was the Roman god of fire and metalworking and it related to the iron foundry nearby. In this sole photograph of the street you can see what I think is the landlord stood outside the Vulcan Arms. The building is more commonly remembered as Simpsons Toy Shop and in this old photograph you can see it still had the name above the new Simpsons shop name. A few steps up the street just past the opticians we come to number 43 which used to be the Maybush. Uh, it had a grocer's shop in the pub and the owner was often listed as a beer seller and shopkeeper on the census. Today, number 43 Berry Street is part of a more recent housing development. A few yards down the road we come to the Pot of Flowers, which closed its doors in 1978. In July 1850 there was a coroner's inquest to find the cause of death of William Barnard, who fell dead near his own door. The verdict was that he died by the visitation of God. In 1972 a man was shot in the nearby car park and stumbled into the pub and died on the bar floor and the chalk mark that the police left round the body was there for several weeks according to local legend. In happier times many remember there being bus seats in the pub and also the occasional outing. We now double back on ourselves a little bit and cross Berry Street Car Park and wander down to the old Stoke Road where we find several more lost pubs of Stowe Market. The building now occupied by Louise's Hair Company was once the barge. The life of this pub really followed the fortunes of the Gipping Navigation opening around the same time and it closed in 1909. It was said around the 1900s that fourpence could get you a pie, a pint and a thick ear at the barge. Doubling back on ourselves, we soon come to number 26 Turplin Road, which was the Staff of Life. It began life as a shop and later became a bar. And like the barge, it served the people coming off the River Gipping, the barges, and also the monsters all around the area. Just across the road from the Staff of Life and the barge was a very ancient building dating back to the 1600s, the White Lion. Although situated a little out of the centre of the town, it's often mentioned as the location for auctions and seems to have been a very busy place. Sadly this ancient building has now been lost as it was demolished to make way for the relief road. A few steps away is number 35 Stopland Road, originally belonging to a pipe maker, but later became a beer house in 1848. Relics of pipes have been found at the rear of the property over the years. Like many beer houses at the time, the Porter's Lodge struggled to get a license and closed in 1940. Now we walk further up the street, crossing the River Gipping, 
walking past the old pickerel pub, that's one of a very old building there, and wait for the dreaded railway crossing, then we come to the next one. And so to pub number 14, the Duke of Wellington Inn on Sturplin Road. Not to be confused with the Little Wellington just opposite. The Duke of Wellington served the area from 1864 till 1975 when it closed. It's now a chiropractor's office. It's about halfway through the walk now and then we'll probably see what happened when the railways came to Stowmarket. I have to say this is the driest pub crawl I've ever been on. I've been to 14 pubs and I've not had a drink yet. Next on the list is the Railway Tavern, or Railway Hotel as it later became known, which opened in 1847, a year after the station opened in Stowmarket. And it was there in business till 1978 when it closed, and it's currently a children's nursery. Next we come to the Phoenix Tavern at 25 Station Road which opened in 1886 and closed in 1921. In June 1885 there was one of Stone Market's most serious fires in Mr Dent's grocer's shop next door in a building that's now been demolished for the relief road and the Phoenix Tavern was rebuilt and so it was the Phoenix rising from the ashes. On the opposite side of the road is a building that used to be the Blue Post from 1839 till 1941. It was also a liquor store as well as a pub and after it closed in 1941 it became a shop and is now a private residence and at some time the door that used to be on the front of the building was moved to the corner. The name the Blue Post probably comes from the blue posts that originally were used to mark the boundary of sporting lands for hunting. Back to the other side of the road and we come to what was the White Horse Inn which opened in 1633 and closed in 1903. This pub had a lot of different landlords over the years. The building is now occupied by a dentist and an optician. This rather sad looking building that stands between the Queen's Head and the Chinese restaurant used to be the Horse and Groom and it was open from 1863 until it closed in 1911 struggling to compete with the Queen's Head next door. Some may remember this as a bike shop uh, but more recently as baby time selling uh, prams and things for babies. And so we wander around the corner, down the side of the church and come to the Rose Inn, another very old building in Stowmarket. It served from 1645 and closed in 1958. The Rose Inn is now a office for solicitors. So we wander across the marketplace towards Crow Street for the next one. The White Hart, formerly the Black Swan, stood at 6 and 6A Crow Street, opened from 1818 and closed in 1967. And this building is now the offices of an estate agent, Lacey Scott and Knight. Just around the corner in the marketplace we find the location of the White Hart, similar name, different pub, which was opened between 1641 and 1808. The building previous to the Peacocks was Woolworths, going back a long way, and even a bit further than that it was also Turner's shop, and it was before that it was the White Hart. 
that's now Peacocks. Along the street a bit and we come to the location of another missing pub. This time the building's completely gone. The King's Head stood there from 1617, uh, closed in 1963 and was demolished shortly after. By contrast, the building that was the Fox Hotel, is now the Fox Yard, still stands in the main street. It was opened from 1766 and closed in 1984. A few doors down next to the oak is a fried chicken shop but this used to be the Prince of Wales pub which was open from 1859 till 1907. This pub always struggled with it being adjacent to the oak next door. After it closed in 1907 it became a shop and at one time a greengrocer's and now as we know a fried chicken shop. Okay, if anyone's still watching, we've just got three more pubs to do, so hang on in there. The next one we come to, which is recent, the most recent victim of closure, is the Duke's Head, which was open from 1660 to 2014. The adjacent Duke's Head Meadow was the site of travelling fairs and circuses in the early 20th century, until the Regal Cinema was built on the site in 1935. if anyone's still watching by this stage but if you are we've got just two more pubs uh, before we close the video and so we come to the unicorn in lime tree place which was open from 1861 and closed in 2010 it was a beer house and bakery back in the day And finally, the last pub is the Rose and Crown at 32 Bridge Street, which opened in 1867 and closed in 1992. I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please click the like button on YouTube, give us a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video.